Good morning, y'all, and welcome back to the channel. Today, today's gonna be fun. So this right here, that's Mr. Thomas. And this is his RV. It is a Durango 321 RKT. And that, that's Phil. How are y'all? In his chair. So today, we're gonna be working on Mr. Thomas's RV. He needs his bearings inspected and repacked, and he told me the local dealership was gonna charge him $660 to do that job. Well, today we're gonna save him a lot of money because we're gonna do it for 57. For some of y'all, inspecting your bearings is an easy job. And for some of y'all, doing anything with that seems very intimidating and a very daunting task. Mr. Thomas is an example of the second. He has never done any of this work. I have not. So today we're gonna show him how to do it and we're gonna teach him how to do it so that he can understand what's being done when he pays people to work on his RV so that he can make the decision that it's actually a lot cheaper just to do it yourself. All right, Phil, you ready to show everybody how to make a hand? Yes, sir. You notice I said sir to him because I am the hand. <laughs> <laughs> what's Thomas, a foot? I'm the foot. <laughs> Step one, we're gonna soft break our lug nuts. Let's get to it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Show us how. You all good? All good. All right, now that we've soft broken both the tires on this side of the RV, we're gonna use a leveling system to pick this thing up off the ground. What are you doing, Phil? Are you ready me to pick it up so you can level it? You ain't gotta work so hard, it's got jacks. Oh, okay. Most people say you're not supposed to use your jacks to change your tires or to do work, but you can because it picks itself up all the time. And if you were on the side of the highway, you would wanna do this to get a tire changed and get off the highway. That's right. The trick is you can't use it the way you think. So you cannot pick this thing up and just lean it one way because it'll tell you angle problems. So the, the, the idea is we pick the whole trailer up till the tires get close to coming off and then we just tilt it slightly one way so only one side of the trailer is actually off the ground. That way if something were to happen, it's not gonna fall down because it's kind of already on the ground. It's just leaning to one side. And then when we work on it, we'll just do one tire at a time. That way if there were to be an accident, still not gonna fall on the ground because there's technically three tires on the ground, four jacks and a truck holding it up. All right, so we had the camper lifted up and the side we're gonna work on, both the tires are off the ground. And the other side, we left the tires on the ground. So we just lean the trailer to this side. As you can see, these are still on the ground. Now we're ready to take a tire off. Mr. Thomas, take off the one you want to start on first. This is the fun part. Oh yeah? As soon as I pulled the impact out, he was like, can I do that? All right, Mr. Thomas, there's your brake. Get to inspecting. <laughs> That's basically how it comes off. You actually get to beat on that with the hammer in a minute. That came off easy, didn't it? Sure did. It actually doesn't take a lot of time to get to the meat and potatoes of this job. And now you're gonna see why it's kind of ridiculous to pay what you're paying because they charge two hours to do an axle, which means they do one side in one hour. They were gonna say it's gonna take a whole hour to do, well, we gotta put it back together. But they say an hour per assembly. How about 10 minutes? We're gonna do it in an hour with filming. So really it's more about a 30 minute job. But you can see we're already almost there and we've only spent about three minutes. Yeah. Phil, how'd you enjoy those three minutes in that chair? Man, I tell you, I almost rocked out one time there, but I'm still here with y'all. All right, so we have the first assembly off. We've already got the axle seal out, and we're comparing it to the new one to make sure it's the right part because there actually is two axle seals for a 6,000-pound Dexter axle. We went ahead and purchased both, and it's still half price compared to the RV store, which is a point I want to stress to you guys. Some reason, whenever you throw the name RV on something, it makes it twice as expensive. This is true. So instead of going to the RV store to get all your axles and bearings and everything for the trailer, just go to your local trailer store. They have more than the RV store will ever have because all these are Dexter axles and Dexter axles are on every type of trailer out there. So they're gonna carry everything and it's gonna be much cheaper. For example, the new seals, the ones we got from the trailer store here, these right here, these are $4. 
the same part number at the RV place that quoted 660 bucks to do this job, they would sell me those for nine dollars. They're charging double just for the seal. So that right there saves you half your money if you just go buy the parts at a place that doesn't have RV in the name. But we're gonna go ahead and get this bearing out, take a look at both bearings, clean everything up, inspect the brakes, get everything put back together, and we're gonna teach Mr. Thomas how to repack bearings. Y'all know what I wish? See that hand there? I got four and a half fingers. How many fingers are on every glove you ever see? Four. Where's the half? I just need a half. I need three and a half fingers. I'm not sure if he knows he has four and a half or three and a half fingers, but he's saying he needs half a finger less. That's right. You want to take it back and get your refund on that one? That's right. <laughs> all right, Mr. Thomas, take that and clean that up really well. Get all the grease off of it so we can look at it and make sure it's still good to go. All right, Phil, there you go. Just what I wanted. <laughs> and while they clean up bearings, we're going to spray all this with brake clean and all that with brake clean, get them cleaned up inspect the spindle the brakes the hub make sure it's all good to go and then we'll start repacking bearings and putting it all back together in the old days a good boss man would have had us a gallon of gas we just drop them down in there kind of shake them a little bit come back out shiny like a new car you know my grandpa cleaned everything in diesel so i'm pretty sure that there's a lot of sense in that whoa, whoa. he agreed <laughs> y'all heard it first but this is the new age we don't dip anything in diesel we just get brake clean and spray it everywhere now we let the brake clean do its thing then we wipe it off and then we'll get a good look at everything so phil you are the chief bearing inspector tell us what you're doing and why you're doing it this is a bearing what we're doing is cleaning it up so that we inspect it. And what we're looking for is any kind of play in it that'd be loose. Any of these bearings, balls in here that go out, spin it around and check out the bearings. Don't drop your rag. And sometimes they'll get a flat place on them. If they get flat places, they, you gotta replace them. But these are pretty darn good. How's yours, Mr. Thomas? Shiny as a new penny. Shiny as a new penny. We'll go ahead and have Phil look at that. Make sure it is shiny as a new penny. Also, we have inspected the hub, which has the race for the inside bearing and the race for the outside bearing. Want to make sure those are all good. There's no scratching or anything like that. And then we come over here and we inspect the spindle, make sure all this is nice and smooth. There's no gouging. We ran some grease through here to make sure it is coming through so that we can grease the bearing through this point when we're on the road. We've looked at the brakes, they look pretty good. They don't need to be changed. All right, Mr. Thomas, you ready to get dirty? I like getting dirty. All right, Phil, this here you is, go. This is the best part, people. Watch this. Get your little dab of do ya, just like your hair used to be. Put it in the palm of your hand. Now then we're gonna take that burn, and on the back side, we're gonna start squishing it. Like you're doing a spoon. Just Keep on a squishing it. You can't get too much. If anything, you can get too little. That's kind of like me at dinner. I can't get too much. I can get, but I can't get too little. And I got my finger stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to be talking. I'm talking away. Can y'all see what I'm doing here? I'm just squishing it in there and around in here. Make a big a mess as you can. Just pretend like you're a kid again. You're gonna make a mess out of this thing. Yeah. And you For those of y'all that want the technical thing, he's squishing it in until it comes out the top and then he's gonna roll the rollers around until they're completely coated. That way we make sure there's grease everywhere inside the bearing. Or as Phil said, just squish it around. That's what I said in country terms. Just I squish, squish it. it around. There's no right or wrong way. Just get it in there, baby. I love the look on Mr. Thomas's face over there. <laughs> you look like fun. <laughs> Man, for once you can make a mess and not get in trouble. <laughs> I would suggest put you on some latex gloves. We got them on. Years and years of thinking about that, we, we decided we better do that. All right, we're going to the other side now. I may not have enough grease left. All right. <laughs> 
Oh, we got more grease. Okay. Thank you. And you got to use that index finger to put that in there. <laughs> I bet they don't believe that, boy. They don't, they don't pick your nose, Phil. I don't pick your nose. That's right. Ooh, Lordy. You might stick your finger in your nose and go clean to your brain. If you got one. <laughs> That's a joke, folks. So whenever me and Thomas get through and all wise ask us what y'all been doing, we just say we've been squishing around. That's what we've been doing today. That's right. People get paid good money for this. Like 600 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I hear. <laughs> hey, maybe you should get a job. You can just squish around all day over there. <laughs> you ain't lying. I use both hands. I get $1,200. You mean somebody gets paid to do this? That's right. Boy, you give this to a little kid, he'd be happy all day. I'm pretty happy myself. Oh, I bet my kids <laughs> wouldn't put a, an ounce of grease anywhere it's supposed to be, but they'd use all of it somewhere. I guarantee you. All right, what we're kind of looking for here is the grease splits going in or else it starts coming out the other side. I don't remember which, but either way, if you're in doubt, squish away. Huh. Are you done? Oh, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> Well, get your squishers on, man. <laughs> All right, people. We've about squished as much as we can squish on this little baby, so it's time to put it in the dead gum thing here. All you got to do is have all some of that squishy grease and just kind of run it around. To be liberal. It don't matter. It ain't going to hurt it. Get it in there. Make it feel good. Yeah. All right. Now then we're going to drop this down in there. Easy with it. That's it. Also, we got to clean that grease up. We don't want it right there. Oh, I didn't see it. But that's okay. I'll take my non-greasy hands and get that for you. All right. And the next step, once we clean it up, is to put our new seal on top of that bearing. All right, Mr. Thomas, show us your squishing technique. <laughs> I think I taught him well. He looked like he's having fun, too. It is fun. It really is kind of fun, though. I'm not gonna let you have all the fun. <laughs> You're not gonna let me have all the fun? Darn. Hey, Phil, you know the only bad part about us making this video? What is that? Is now Lolo is going to know that you know how to do it. <laughs> oh, Lordy. <laughs> I know what you've been doing. You've been out squishing, have you? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> yeah. You might have to cut that part out. All right, so we have our new seal in, and to put that in, you just take a dead blow hammer, you get it started. And when you're close, you take a two by four, a flat two by four, put it right there and give it a few love taps and make sure when you put it in, it's nice and flush and that you don't mess up this seal right here. And then we came over here and we inspected the spindle. It's all good. So we put a light coat of grease on the spindle and the sealing portions where the seals will be. Now we're going to put it back together. So we have the hub back on. And what I like to do is I like to use my grease gun right here. Put it right here on the zerk and fill that cavity in there until I start seeing the grease come back. You can also pre-fill the hub by hand and just make a mess. I like to do it this way because I know that the seal is working and the grease is coming this way in the cavity. And we're going to be ready for Mr. Thomas when he's done squishing over here for the last bearing. I've got it squished. I feel like you're having a little bit too much fun with this. <laughs> well, I am. Go ahead and put that bearing on. Now you're going to have to wiggle the hub some to get it to go all the way in. There you go. Just push it right down. Boy, that slid in just so easy. Easy now. All right. Once we get the bearing on, then it's just a matter of putting the washer, the nut, and setting the tension. We have everything put back together, and I was just explaining to Mr. Thomas, how do you know you have it tight enough? Well, first of all, you take the nut and you run it down to make sure everything is seated. Then you back the nut off, and then you do it hand tight, and you start rotating it until it gets to where it rotates just a little bit. It's not dragging the whole time, but it's not also free flowing. And then you put your fancy little, I don't know what it's called. I call it a new age cotter pin. Cotter pin. It's a, it's just a nut retainer. Gives us nothing backing off. Then put our grease cap on and then we're done.
All right, we interrupt this epic time lapse to show you why we're doing this job. Mr. Thomas's grease seal has not been grease sealing. As you can see, there is grease and everything and all your brakes, which means grease is going through the seal right here and getting all in this area. And that's why this one looks like it does because the grease has been going places it's not supposed to. That's not good. And this is why you do this every year to make sure that grease is staying where grease is supposed to be. So you stop when you need to stop. This is what happens when you squish too far, Phil. It squishes places it's not supposed to go. I know that right. <laughs> so now we're gonna clean all this up and make sure that when we put the new seal on, it's not going that way. It's staying where it's supposed to be. Now, back to the epic time lapse. So we're done with this side. We have the tires back on the ground. Mr. Thomas is torquing them. We're not gonna go into how to torque them because this is our rig. If you need to know how to torque them, check the user manual on your rig, but we're doing a step technique. We're doing it at three stages, getting it to our final torque. And then after about hundred miles, he's gonna check the torque again. And Phil just said something really funny about all this greasing. This greasing and all the squishing we've been doing, they need to invent something for people that's got arthritis in their hips and their knees. Put a fitting on there and just, man, I'd be ready for a marathon then. For all y'all that were worried about how Phil walks, that's actually Phil walking good. But he says, man, if I could have a little few squirts of grease, you'd be ready to go. We couldn't keep up with you, huh? You'd be a little dabble, do you? They said in the <laughs> old days. <laughs> you don't remember the hairdo, do you? No, I don't. There used to be a hairdo like that. A little dabble, do you? Or a little dab in your hip will do you, I guarantee you. What about you, Mr. Thomas? You need a little dab? I need a little dab in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> we have half the trailer done. Now we're switching to the other side. We already got it set up to where this side's off the ground. You can see they're all moving. I will say if you have the electric leveling system, it's a little bit touchier to get this thing to pick itself up. And I think it's because it doesn't allow as much of a deviation side to side as say the hydraulics, because on mine, I can get my RV to lean pretty good before it gives me the fault. With the electric ones, you can't get far side to side before it gives you an alarm. So you end up having to pick the whole RV up together and then just slightly leaning it over to get these tires off the ground. But it can be done. And now it's time for the second half of the job. You ready? I'm ready. Hey, Phil, why don't you tell them how the temperature is in Texas in December? <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is crazy weather, isn't it? We saw some people out there bailing hay coming out here. <laughs> this is December, people. <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all were seeing this the first part of January, but it's the end of December right now and someone was baling hay yesterday. We actually mowed the yard this weekend too, in December. This is crazy, I guarantee you. If you they say in Texas, if you don't like the weather, just wait 10 minutes. I mean, look at this. For example, look at Mr. Thomas's green grass. I haven't seen green grass since like September. I know it, I don't know. <laughs> All you folks in the Northeast, we do have seasons. It's basically summer year round with a few days where it's not summer. We have about one week of ice weather and that's about it every year. Yeah. And the ice has already been here. So you see how good a job it did killing the grass. I guess El Nino did, doesn't come to Texas. They know better. <laughs> <laughs> I could get me a part-time job doing this because I like this. I could, who had ever thought squishing a dead young bear would be so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah y'all paid me six hundred dollars we'll come fix you up i'm also trying to figure out why you two have on matching uniforms you know whenever we film videos y'all don't have to dress like me hey 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 we're, hey if you when you get it done for free <laughs> <laughs> you advertise <laughs> everything ain't free though we had to buy these coats believe it or not that's right he told me times are hard <laughs> Don't let him lie to you. He got them at the employee discount. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same price for y'all if you wonder. <laughs> what are you doing, Phil? I almost caught you in the act. You're over here playing with gloves now? i tell you what. You just call me Dr. Phil. I got my uniform on, my gloves. I'm all gloved up. I'm ready to go in. Are y'all ready for the last tire? One more time of squishing. One more time. 
12,000 miles later, we'll do her again, baby. Well, Phil, now that you're done, uh, you know, squirting grease around, what are you gonna do the rest of the day? Man, when you've been a grease quarter and a squincher, it's just downhill from now, isn't it? What, I mean, what else I got to look forward to? Going home and taking a nap? You know me, I don't ever take naps or sit down. Hey, you see my new stool? That's what you do out in the country. You make do with what you have. After three hours and $57, we are now done inspecting and repacking all the bearings and the brakes on Mr. Thomas's RV. Now, Mr. Thomas, do you think after doing it today, it's worth taking it to the dealership and giving them $660 for this job? Absolutely not. Now the question is, now that you've done it with us, would you do it yourself next time? Probably so. Probably so. So that right there, Mr. Thomas has never done, you've never done any mechanical work, right? Not not a lot of mechanical work. Not a lot. Of so you wouldn't work. say that this is the normal things that you would do in life? No, absolutely not. So for those of you out there who want to do this, but you're afraid or intimidated by trying to do this yourself, you saw today, Mr. Thomas doesn't have any experience doing this, and after we showed him once, he actually did most of the work. I was just there to help, and so was Phil, but we had Mr. Thomas doing it to show you guys that even though you're not mechanically inclined, you can do this job. And we also showed you how much you can save, because it is not a very hard job, but that's the price they charge when you bring them to the dealerships. You can do it in your driveway a lot cheaper and a lot faster, and then plus, this also gives you a chance to inspect your rig, that way you know what's going on. That's going to do it for this video. We hope you had a great time hanging out with us. We love you and we'll see you in the next one.